Okay, I thought I'd take apart the 1Z Presso JX. This is the cheaper of the two grinders. Um, it's beautifully made, aluminium body. Um, the grind receptacle comes off very simply. That reveals the burr and the adjustment mechanism, which I think has 24 clicks. I haven't really counted them. The first thing to do before you take it apart, and one of the more important things would be, screw it all the way closed and count how many turns. It'll normally be one turn, and in my case, about nine clicks, and the handle's tight. Because you'll want to return it to that setting it uh, saves dialing in the hand grinder again. Well, that's my setting for espresso. One turn out plus nine clicks. Anyway, the burr is locked up, so I found the closed position. Now I can just unscrew this. And all you do, you unscrew this fitting here from the bottom. And when it comes out, this is the adjuster. There we go. That's the turny bit. This is the cap on the burr. No, I don't have much. There's the burr. And this little cap is the grind scale and the location pins on the burr. We'll put that there. We'll put the burr there. Now, the Chinese are clever and they thought this one through. This is not a normal unscrew thread, but a reverse thread. You actually have to turn it. Um, so if you turn it that way, the opposite way to what you think. Uh, obviously that way the grinding action can't loosen this thread. That's very clever. That one comes off. Go in the opposite direction. And they're quite fine threads, which is nice. And there's the inner burr. And underneath that is a small spring. This spring keeps the pressure on the bottom burr to stop the burr sort of having any float, uh, end float, which is quite nice. I'll pop the handle off now because you don't need that on. And there's another cap in here. Right, so I finally got this piece off. It's quite close fitting, and unless you've got, you know, fingers that are small, it can be. Fairly tricky um, to reach for me anyway. This is the grinder disassembled. Um, obviously for cleaning you would disassemble it, you would brush off the burrs, you would brush off all the coffee out of all the bits. Um, I've done that because I didn't make, want to make a mess on the mat. Um, of course the one thing I immediately noticed when cleaning was that this burr um, and, and this burr here, uh, especially around in here, can develop like a, a hardened ring of coffee. This is where the coffee comes out. So I, I actually get a toothbrush and I give it a good go around here. And I find a dry toothbrush will actually get off any deposits that are quite stubborn that their soft brush won't actually get off. Yeah. Now, if ever you find you need to do a deeper clean, one of the ways might be to use a bit of isopropyl alcohol on a toothbrush and very quickly give it a good go over. You shouldn't need to, but if you ever feel that yeah, you really want to get those coffees off, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, um, get the burrs a real good go, and then afterwards, after you put it back together, Make sure you just grind a shot straight away. You can throw it away or drink it just to coat the burrs because if, if you use the alcohol, although they're stainless steel, should be all right. But if you use the alcohol, I always think it's nice to actually recoat the burrs with something. And again, here you can give them a good brush with a stiff toothbrush because I often feel this makes a better job of cleaning. So it, it, it's a very nice and very easy grinder to take apart. It's uh, really well made. I mean, the bearings fabulous. You've got a bearing right at the top. You've got a bearing right, uh, sorry, at the bottom there, quite close to the burr where, where the burr comes up. I mean, I haven't put the cap on, but the burr actually come come up quite close to the bearing once it's on. You've got a bearing right near the handle, and they're good quality bearings. You can see the 
good bearings. No play in the shaft at all. Really nice. I mean, the uh, Taiwanese have done a great job with this grinder. Anyway, I'm going to pop it back together, which is a simple process. You just put the cap on here. You put the spring on there and push them down. That beds onto the bearing. Then you would, uh, you could screw this on. And obviously uh, to screw it on, I'm screwing it the opposite direction that you would normally screw a thread. And get it on nice and tight. Then we take the burr and I found the best way to fit the burr is to actually place that bit with the pins on this, got your grind scale first, and then drop the burr on the shaft so you can align the square there. Otherwise it just becomes a little awkward. Then we have this last bit at the top. Now this is your grind scale mechanism. Just push the burr down into the grinder against the spring and then screw this on a bit. Be gentle because you don't want to gall up the threads. Um, by pushing it down it makes it really easy to screw in. It's quite a fine thread. Then you can pop the handle back on. Screw it tight. Now the body's aluminium, all the shaft and obviously bearings are steel. But you screw it up all the way till the handle doesn't move. There we go, a couple of clicks. You don't have to be super, super tight with it. And then to get it back to espresso for this grinder, it's uh, one turn and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine clicks. And I will be pretty much back in the espresso range. And that's it, the grinder's nice and clean, back together, make sure everything moves freely, which it does, and then put the base on. But yeah, this, um, well, you know, as, uh, uh, from an engineering point of view, it's been thought about, it's been really, really nicely made. Um, yeah, it's just a beautiful thing to hold. Uh, actually very, very tactile to use. I, I don't normally hate the expression, feels good in the hand, but for the, this one Z Presso JX, yeah, it does, feels, feels good in the hand. Um, 